Hello, I'm Carolyn and in this video I'm going to show how easy it is to use tile clones to create lattice designs. In this video I'll show the basic square lattice and show a few examples of how it can be used with a few more steps. To start my project I'm going to draw a square and I'm just going to change it to the size I want. For this example I'm going to make it 10 millimeters. Then edit, clone, create tiled clones. Symmetry, I'll leave it P1, simple translation. Now I either enter rows and columns or I can enter width and height. For this project I might make it 6 inches by 6 inches. So I'll change this to inches. So I'll type in 6, press enter. Type in 6, press enter. Then I'll move to the shift tab. I'm going to change these settings, but before I do, I'll just click on create and show what happens. I've now got 256 tiled clones. I can see that they're all touching. Now as I want to create a lattice, that won't work. If you're using different shapes, you will find you do have some spaces, but as these are squares, they're all touching. This is why I'll change the settings in shift. So columns, I'll change it here might try 20, so I'll just type in 20. Now I want this to remain a square, so I'll change rows to the same number. So I'll enter 20 there and click on create. Keep in mind when you're creating these designs that this space in between will actually be your cardstock when you're cutting out this design. And the number you enter here is a percentage of the original shape. My original was 10 millimetres, so the space is 2 millimetres. But if for some reason I decide that I would like a bigger space, I can still change settings now. This square that's highlighted is the original, and while it's selected, I can change these settings as often as I want. So if I change this to 30, I'll change this one to 30 as well, then I can just click on Create. And I get a bigger spacing. So keep in mind when you're learning this, while the original one is selected, you can keep changing your designs and just clicking on create. So I'm actually going to go back to 20. So I'll click on create. When I've made all the changes, I'll just close the box so it's out of the way. As I mentioned a minute ago, the square that is currently selected is the original. Now all of these clones are linked to the original and as I want to do further design work I must unlink them. One of the easiest ways is to just delete the original. Now for some reason that doesn't work or the original isn't selected, just select all of the objects. When they're all selected click on this padlock that's unlocked and it will unlink all the clones. Now if you have a lot of clones, this can take some time and Inkscape might say not responding. Just be patient, it usually does work. Once they're all unlinked, go Path Union. Why I applied Path Union was so these will act as one piece. This design at the moment can be used and cut out, but I usually just use it as a base to create further designs. This video has only shown the basic steps to get you started. The aim is for you to then experiment and create your own wonderful designs. With this one, I'm just going to draw a square. Might just change the colour so you can see the contrast a bit better. Now I'm going to send it to the back. So I'm just going to lower it. Might actually make it just a little bit smaller. I'm going to select them both, open alignment, center it horizontal and vertical. Now look at my design, I can see I actually didn't have a square. So I'll unlock the padlock and change the height to 160 as well. Reselect them, realign them. Then I'm going to go path difference. And there's a basic lattice design. With the next one, I'm going to draw an oval. 
going to align it. Then I'm going to duplicate it. The way I've duplicated them is to show you how different path operations can affect the outcome. The first one, I'll select the oval and the lattice. And I'm going to go path difference. And that's the result. With the second one, select them both and go path intersection. Now, of course, if I cut out these designs at the moment, I'm going to have lots of little individual squares, which isn't suitable. So all I need to do is draw the shape I plan on using. Bring the lattice over and just raise it. Just change the sizing. To make sure it's central, I'll just select both parts and align them. Then I'll go path difference. With this one, I might just draw a rectangle, send it to the back, select them both, align them, apply path difference. So from one basic set of tiled clones, it's very easy to create lattice type designs. If you haven't tried using tiled clones for lattice, give it a try because a lot of different effects can be created very easily. If you would like to visit my blog, I do have this in PDF format that you can download and use as a cheat sheet. I also have some of these basic lattice designs as free downloads on my website, which is cuttingtime.blogspot.com. Thank you.